welcome to the most perfect morning here in Brasov, Romania. We've just spent the last how, eight days. Eight in days the or Bucharest. eight nights? Yep. Pretty much just relaxing and not filming anything, not really even doing anything. We we're just mm -hmm. recovering from van life. <laughs> yes. it actually, really took it out of us. That was so much harder than what we thought it would be. It was so challenging, really fun, and we'd 100% do it again. Pretty excited to do it again now that we've yeah. had a a week break from it. But we're super excited to be here in Brasov and today we are, well this morning we're heading off on a tour to check out some of the local castles. Loka? Local? Local castles. Local castles. <laughs> I think two castles, one fort. Ooh, I didn't I read think. that. Okay, cool. I think. Looking you didn't read it, it, you booked it. Yeah, I didn't read that bit. I just saw castles and I was like, done. <laughs> Alright, we're going to meet our tour group in about five, five minutes. minutes. Mm -hmm. So, we're going to head up the road to McDonald's and that's where we're meeting them. This specific tour through Get Your Guide, it was about $100 Australian per person. It goes for about eight hours, three different places. Really comfortable minivan with two other couples, so very small group. The guide is amazing. We're not usually tour people, like Steve absolutely hates going on tours, but we thought it's just easier to get from A to B, and especially because we are going to multiple places. They're waiting for us, so we better get going. Hellish? Hellish Castle. Hellish Castle. ever been inside because we've never paid to go inside one before. First castle that's not a ruin. <laughs> this is a secret door behind this staircase. We'll go straight into the king's apartment on the second floor. Marshmallowiest cappuccino I think I've ever seen. Right, so we've just finished our tour of the castle and we didn't really do a whole lot of talking in there just because we were soaking in everything our guide sort of had to say. A few interesting facts, it was built in... 1873, it took 39 years to build and it was the residence of the King and Queen, so King Carol and Queen Elizabeth. They came over from Germany to rural Romania essentially. It's actually classed as a modern castle mm -hmm. and it was built with electricity, yeah. plumbing, like running water, hot and cold, <laughs> um, has an elevator, ventilation system. Ventilation. It also has a central vacuum system where you yeah. can just like a modern house, plug a vacuum cleaner hose in and, yeah. and vacuum. Another thing I really loved about it was the different influences throughout the castle. So you'd walk into one section and it was Florentine and then Venetian and then you'd walk into the next room and it had the influence of like uh, Moorish decoration, so Northern Africa, Southern Spanish, massive weapons collection as well. It also had a pretty insane woodwork throughout mm -hmm. the whole castle. It took over 2,000 master woodworkers or woodcutters over yep. two years to carve mm -hmm. everything that we saw there from walls, windows, furniture, mm -hmm. ceilings. Yeah. Insane. We're going to finish these coffees, jump back in our van, and I think we're off to Bran Castle. Yep, we're going to Bran Castle, and then we are finishing off at another fortress. They're all very close together, so if you're coming to this part of Romania, Transylvania, then you're more than likely going to do all, or at least two or three of them. So. Brain Castle next, looking very forward to that. It's probably the most popular place to visit in the entire country. We made a quick stop at the Sanaya Monastery to take a look around and stroll the beautiful grounds. Our guide mentioned the fort we were visiting later in the day was under renovation, so thought we'd enjoy a little side trip here on the way to Brain Castle. So after about an hour drive from the monastery that we stopped at, we are at Bran Castle. I am so excited to go into here. I'm pretty hungry too, so I'm excited to eat at one of the restaurants that we walked past on the way here. So let's head on to the castle. As you can see, Bran Castle isn't quite as grand or spectacular as Palish Castle. As our guide here is explaining, it was originally built as a fort and later converted to a castle and is nowadays a museum for tourists.
So this one is a million times busier than the Palace Castle. Understandably, it is the late afternoon. It's going on almost three o'clock now. So yeah, a lot of people here. We were still able to navigate our way through. Our guide is wonderful. So he does a great job of finding little spots in the castle to give us information. This castle is commonly referred to as Dracula's Castle, and as we're navigating our way through the narrow cobblestone staircases, you can see influences of the infamous Dracula story sprinkled throughout the castle. This was presented quite tastefully and not too over the top or tacky, as we were kind of expecting. Three times. When we said we we're hungry, I think that was a, a little bit of an understatement. We got so much food. I got potatoes and a vegetable, I think it's chicken, I don't know what meat it is. Steve got cheese and polenta and sausage. All right, we're gonna get into this and uh, I don't know. We're a little bit delirious because we haven't eaten for so long. Yeah, our blood sugar levels are non-existent. <laughs> So I don't actually think we said earlier that the $100 each was basically just for the transportation, the guide, and to get us from A to B. He did come into all the different castles with us and took us through and guided us through, gave us all the information. I couldn't imagine doing this without a guide actually. He, uh, Florian is amazing. The We did have to pay entrance fees for every castle that we went into. So Palish Castle was 50 lei each, so about 17 Australian dollars and the brand castle was 60 lei each to get in so about 20 Australian dollars there are many different types of tours that you can actually do we chose this one because it was based from Brasov most of them do leave from Bucharest or they go back to Bucharest but we just didn't want to double up because we knew that we were coming to Brasov anyway so we didn't want to come here and then come here again from Bucharest so yeah we were super happy with the day and we are just about to head back to the van after that delicious lunch and I had a sneaky gelato to go back to Brasov. So yeah, good day all round. Weather was beautiful, amazing people on the tour. Hey buddy. Hey. Mm -hmm. This guy just came walking up to us, or me, he's be sitting over there. Hey. As we mentioned earlier in the video, Rashnov Fort was undergoing renovations, but we were lucky enough to pop the drone up and check it out from above. Welcome back to another day in Brushoff. So yesterday we spent the day checking out some castles and today we're gonna to check out the old town here. This morning we did a hike up to the Brushoff sign up on the mountain here, just above the town. It was so cool, it went for about an hour. Got up there, admired the view over the old town of Brushoff and then jumped in the cable car and took that down. So it was 30 lei if you wanted to go from top to bottom, like a return trip, but we only paid 20 lei because we were lazy and we caught yeah. the tram back down or cable car. We weren't lazy, it just started getting warm and we kind of got over it so and we were on high alert the whole time for the bears if you didn't know Romania has a lot of bears they say to play uh, your music to ward off the bears I don't know how true that is um, but yeah it was a really good hike beautiful morning for it and I think we are going to head into the well we were, we're staying in the old, in the old town, town yeah. but we're gonna head into the uh, square where the black church and I think there's markets on today because it's a Saturday grab a coffee because we haven't had a coffee yet it's two o'clock in the afternoon so we definitely need one of those and we're going to check out the area
I don't know if it's because it's a weekend or this is just standard practice here in the square, but there's a whole heap of market set up. This one here is a fan of markets. I love a good market, more so food markets, and I like little knickknacks and jewellery, but unfortunately we can't buy too much because we can't carry it around with us, so... I'm not a huge market fan, unless there's food. So today, Council Square is a beautiful meeting place for everyone visiting and the locals here. But in the past, it's had a bit of a dark history. It used to be used for public executions and trials. And then in Soviet times, it was turned into a car park to discourage people gathering and socialising in the area. I think I'm the local photographer today. I don't know, everyone's asking me to take their photo. I'll take it as a compliment. It's time to go find some shade. Not too far from the square is, what church is it? This is the, we're heading now just off the square to see the Black Church. Funnily enough, it's not actually black. It's given the name the Black Church because there was a fire that tore through it in the 1600s and it blackened the walls, the interior of the church. It's very grand. I believe it's the biggest Gothic, the largest Gothic church in all of Eastern Europe. So we're going to admire it from the front. I don't think we're going to go inside, but it is huge. So sticking with the theme of staying out of the sun and things that are close to each other, we're heading from the Black Church to String Street, I think it's called. String Street, know. Rope Street. And it is apparently one of three narrow streets in Europe. Ooh, I think we went to one of the other ones in Prague. Prague, yeah. Was which was, one? from memory, the narrow street yep. in Europe. Little bit of info, at the widest point of this street, it's 1.5 meters. And at the narrowest point, it is, I think, 1.1. And it was used back in the day for firefighters to run between the different streets. We've actually seen a lot of videos and photos of this street when it was freshly painted. But now it's got all these, I don't even know if I'd call it graffiti. It's more like just people writing their names and doodling all over the walls. <laughs> so graffiti. <laughs> I like it, I really like it. Or we call it um, street art. It's definitely not street art. No, it's it, graffiti. It's actually people just writing like their Instagram tags or, you know, K loves S. K does love S. It does, that's true. Also, before we forget, we wanted to give a shout out to Tim and Sherry. When we were walking down from, well, we got the cable car down from the brush old sign hike this morning, we bumped into this American couple and they were so nice. So Tim and Sherry, hello if you are watching this. And it was nice to see you twice in the matter of a few hours. We bumped into them again at Council Square yeah. and it is a quite a small, like old town. Mm -hmm. So we'll probably end up seeing them a third time. Hopefully, they're so nice. And I still cannot believe we've got this whole straight this whole alleyway to ourselves like there's no one else in here at the moment So we just wanted to talk a little bit on, I guess, our first impressions or observations since arriving here in Romania. We only have been to Bucharest and Brasov, but so far it has well and truly exceeded our expectations. Yeah, we didn't really know what to expect when we booked tickets to come yeah. to Romania. Yeah. Friends who have come here in the past have said it's been amazing, mm -hmm. but you don't really know for yourself until you actually get there. Yeah, the people here are, I'm going to say interesting. They're very pleasant. It's kind of a little bit hit and miss with how you're going to be received I guess. The customer service is completely different to what it is in Australia or the US or the UK. They do kind of have this... I find most people have a bit of a, like, a hard exterior yes. but once you get talking to them and sort of get I don't know... A little bit deeper a, into a conversation. Yeah and a little bit of banter they really open up and they're yep. really, like Romanians are the friendliest people. We have met some super friendly Romanians but also not 
I'm not going to sugarcoat it. There have been some pretty rude interactions. <laughs> I don't know if it's rude, but it's just different to what we're used to. And who said that our way of customer service is the right way? Beer time. So like we said, it's very hot outside and we walked past this place selling craft beer, so yeah. we had to come in. We're not actually sure if it's open. There's no one here. We don't know where to order from and is it open? We'll see. Oh my God, there is. There's a lot of people here. How embarrassing. So I kind of panicked order. I went in there with all intentions of getting a Coke Zero or like a lemon drink and I, at the last minute, changed my mind and got a gin and tonic. So I think... I don't know what that, I think it's rosemary, is it? Rosemary? Yeah. Usually it's with like cucumber, but this looks like grapefruit and... Oh, it's flat. Oh, this, it's not carbonated. That's Ooh. weird. Really weird. And I went for, well, originally I went for a beer called the Beretta Juice Bag, which was a, where is it, hazy IPA, but that all ran out. So I'm getting a... Summer Haze, I think he said. Steve just said, what would you recommend? He said the Summer Punch. It's called Summer Punch. Ooh. We also ordered chips because oh I was God. starving and I couldn't drink a beer without having some chips. These are so thin and crunchy and you can tell that they're hand cut, handmade. I think that's blue cheese sauce. Yum. Taste this sauce. This sauce is amazing. How good is that? Mm. Alright, we're gonna finish these and honestly, probably go out for dinner. <laughs> this is dinner before the dinner, the pre dinner snack. Necessity when Steve's having a beer. We actually came to Romania thinking that it was going to be like high teens, early, uh, low 20s. No, we were not prepared for this mid 30 degree temperature, 30 degrees Celsius temperature. So I've had, I've got one dress. And that has pretty much lasted me the last, what, year and a half that we've been traveling. We're gonna have a 50 degree Celsius temperature difference. We're going from 35 degrees in some countries to negative 15 degrees, or could be negative yes. 15 degrees in other countries. So yes. that's a 50 degree temperature change. Yes. So that's what we've, we've packed for, essentially. Yeah. So keep watching our videos if you wanna know where we go, where it gets to about minus 15 degrees. We hope it doesn't. We hope, it, we hope it doesn't get that cold. Zero is fine. So if you're looking for a good place to come while you're in brush off for a craft beer, head there. There's about, I think, 20 or 30 different craft beers there, all from Romania. And super friendly staff. Really, really awesome people and highly recommend going there for a beer. But after that beer, I'm pretty hungry. Beer makes me very hungry. I don't know if it's hungry or if it's just like... You just want to eat carbs because you're <laughs> drinking beer. I think that's what it is. It's definitely that. So <laughs> we're going to head for dinner now. I think we're going for a restaurant out of the old town. I think so too. Do you want to know what time it is? We're going to be eating dinner. Five to four. <laughs> <laughs> Which is good because it's the weekend. We'll get there nice and early. Yeah. Hopefully they're open, but we'll beat the yeah. crowd. Yeah. So <laughs> this is what happens when Steve drinks beer. We go for four o'clock dinners. Another thing that I'm loving about Brush Off is the alfresco. There's so many restaurants, bars and cafes that kind of spill out, especially in the old town. And it's just got the best atmosphere, especially on a nice, beautiful day. Everyone's out, families with their kids, there's heaps of dogs. And it's just a really, really nice atmosphere here in kind of the old town and the surrounding area. So on to the on to so on the way to the restaurant that we're going to for dinner, we actually walked through Catherine's Gate, which was one of the entry points to the city, the old town, because the old town is a walled city. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Was a walled city. Was a walled city. It's not anymore. <laughs> Some of the walls still do exist. Yeah. But a lot of them have been knocked down or fallen down. Do you wanna tell the people what just happened? Yeah, so there's two parts in this restaurant. We walked in the first part that we saw and we literally walked into someone's wedding. So I walked in, made a little bit of a scene. Not a scene, but like I was surprised. So we just like turned around, walked out, walked around the corner. Aircon is not a 
thing here. So we're opting to sit outside for dinner in a hope that a cool breeze sweeps through. It is not happening right now, but we're holding out that there will be some sort of breeze later on. We're at a place called Casa Romanesca, and it was recommended to us by our tour guide that we went to visit the castles earlier on in the video, Florian. So we're excited for some Romanian food. All right, so the food has arrived. We went for three dishes. We probably shouldn't have because we've also got bread, so technically four dishes. I went for pretty common, not a pretty common, a pretty traditional, traditional dish here. It's the tripe, tripe soup. I've never had tripe, I'm pretty excited for it. We've also got a beetroot salad, and Christy went for the cabbage rolls, which look really good. But yeah, I'm gonna try this. That's the tripe there. Oops, dripping everywhere. It just kind of looks like chicken. The tripe itself actually just tastes like rendered fat. Kind of chickeny rendered fat. It's nice, mm. isn't it? I don't know if nice is the word, but the, the soup's definitely nice. It's like garlic butter soup. I'm excited for these. I had these in Croatia, the Sarma in Croatia. I don't know if it's the same. And I have a friend who's Croatian and his mum makes really good Sarma. Ah. So, let's give it a try. I love it. It's really, really nice. It's probably not I, the best thing to order on a 35 degree day, <laughs> but it's still really delicious. I really want to try that piece of pork there. I'll try it. All right. Just looks like a huge piece of bacon, mm. like pork belly. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to finish this, or we're going to get stuck into this, and probably pick it back up when we order dessert. How did this happen? So we ordered one. And we got two. This actually, we have had this before. We had it in Bucharest and the same thing happened. <laughs> we're like, we'll just get one Papanashi and they're like one portion. And we're like, yes. But then we end up with one each. So I don't know if there's obviously some miscommunication there along the lines. I'm 100% not complaining, but I just want to know how do we order one of these Papanashi and not one each? It's essentially a fried donut or dumpling. The one we had last time had lemon rind through it, which was so good. And this has got, it's like a cream cheese or a sour cream with a berry jam, blueberry jam, I think it is. So, and a dusting with icing sugar over the top. So, I already know I like this before I even try it. I don't even need to wonder. Christy couldn't finish hers, so I'm gladly to eat hers. I'll just finish hers off. That was so cheap. It was 120 Romanian lei, which is $40 Australian for all of that food. We both had drinks. We had all the food and the dessert. And there is quite a big tipping culture here in Romania, so we tipped about 20% onto that. So, such good value. Here's the restaurant name once again. Casa Romanesca. Thank you again, Florian, for recommending we go there. Yep, awesome. So good, really good value, awesome food, good wait stuff, and it was cheap. And it was only about, what, a five minute, or maybe a 10 minute walk out of the old town? Yeah. So not, not too far away. And it's good to actually get out of the old town and yeah. see a bit of the city without all the hordes of tourists. Like, in, it's quite chilled in front of us. We're gonna finish the vlog here and we'll see you next time. Alright, bye. Bye. Watch your head. Oh, oh. Nearly. Follow me into the abyss. We definitely will not be using that. <laughs> so if you're looking for a good place to come, where are we? We're in brush off. Brush off. What comes with the papanashi? A berry what? Come quite. <laughs> How do, you, how do you say it? Compot. Com, compot. Yeah. Compot. Yeah. So not kumquat. I think kumquat's a like a citrus fruit.